Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first. No matter what you're going through in your life, no matter what today is or whatever it seems like, place your cross on first. You need it in this world that we live in. We we need Christ. You know, Christ came so that, so that you can be saved from what? The world. And be saved from when he come back. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today I'm going to read from Mark chapter 13. And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said unto him, Master, see what man of stones, what buildings are here? And Jesus answering and said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be one left, one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering him began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. The first thing he said was, Take heed lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, when most people here come say, I am Christ, just think about what a Christian is, you're a follower of Christ. Many will say they are followers of Christ. And when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must need be. But the end shall not be yet. For nations shall rise against nation. Look at the world we live in now. There's so much division going on in the world. A kingdom against kingdom. There should be earthquakes and diverse places. And there should be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. You know, not too long ago, Hawaii had a blizzard. That's unheard of. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils. And in the synagogues you shall be beaten. And you shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. Now think about that. The gospel must be first published among all nations. That means it's going to be pu published in every tongue. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak. Neither do you premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. A lot of times in this world, you're not going to have this Bible with you. But if you study to show yourself to prove and you feel with the Holy Ghost, you're going to know exactly what to say, when to say it, how to say it. Because the Holy Ghost is going to teach you. Now, the brother shall betray the brother to death. So people are going to turn on each other. For what? Because you are a follower of Christ. That's why he said, take heed lest any man be to deceive you. And the father, the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents. Look at the world we live in now. Children are rising up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. That means all this going on, keep your faith. Keep your faith in Christ. Remain a follower of Christ. Don't let nobody deceive you. Don't go backwards. Stay the course. When we shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judea flee into the mountains. And let him that is on the house top not go down into the house. Neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. Because one thing about it, you can't take none of this stuff with you. Basically saying he's going he gonna to provide for you. And let him that is in the field not turn back again to take up his garment. You ever watch a, a destruction movie and people want to try to grab things? I remember during Katrina, a lot of people didn't want to leave their they, uh, material blessings around. So they stayed with them homes and it got destroyed. But God said there's plenty of destruction. And the news saying a storm's coming this way. And the people are like, well, I'm going to stay here. I've been here for years. This is where my stuff is. It's, hey, leave that junk. Well, to, woe to them that are with child and them that give suck in those days. It's going to be bad for people that are have children. And pray ye that your flight be not in winter. For in those days shall be affliction, since it was not from the beginning of the creation of God created to this time, that it shall be. And except that the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh shall be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, there here is Christ, 
uh, lo, he is there. Believe him not. There are people who are saying Christ could have already came. And we just didn't believe him. Well, we know for a fact that Christ, when he returns, he's coming from above. He's not coming from below. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. So be careful. But take heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, wild, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost parts of the earth to the uttermost parts of heaven. He will gather his children. Hmm. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and put a forth leaf, you know that summer is near. So ye in like manner, when you see, shall see these things come to pass, know that it is not, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But if that day and that hour know of no man, not the angels, which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Because the Father, the Son, is waiting for instruction from the Father to go and get his people. Take ye heed, watch and pray. For you know not when that time is. For the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, you, and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight or at a cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto you all, watch. Pay attention. How do you know the, the, what's coming on? Christ told you what to look out for. Watch. I watched a movie. I didn't know this. I watched a movie um, earlier this year about marriages back in the day. You see, when a man was betrothed to a woman back in the day, the only person knew, the per only person that knew when the wedding was going to take place, it could take place in a day, in a night. Any time, but the only person that knew was the father of the bride. I mean, of the groom. The father of the groom, the only person that knew exactly when he was going to tell the groom to go get his bride. But in the meantime, they had to be ready at all times. So they realized that they're married to, to they're about to get married. So in the meantime, they prepped themselves to bride. That means all the people who waiting to go to the wedding were always ready to go because it may come any time. You know, I didn't know this, but it was like it was a marvelous thing to realize how Jesus talked to the people in regards to how their times were back then. But it's the same time now. So if you're ready, you're waiting for Christ to come. You got to be prepared at all times. You don't want anybody to deceive you. Let's say if you really wanted to go to that wedding so bad, you ain't finna go take a vacation. Cause you know, the, the father might say, hey, it's time right now. And you gone, you missed, you missed the opportunity. You're gonna miss the um, ceremony of marriage. If you're too busy trying to rip and run and do other things and worry about the cares of this world. So come to find out, Everybody never made it to the wedding because some people didn't stay prepared. And the thing is, once they got into the, the wedding hall, whatever's was going to do the wedding, they shut the doors and they locked them. So if you didn't come in and you wasn't ready, you wasn't prepared, you didn't go in. Just like the women with the candles who wanted to borrow some of the oil from the other women. They were like, no, I can't give you my oil. And then I miss, miss the coming. You need to go find you some more. So that means you need to be prepared with a little overflow too. <laughs> you got to have a little extra. You can't just have the bare minimum. You understand? Does it make sense to you? But he's telling you how to be prepared. He's telling you you're going to be hated. He said many cross fires Christ will come. People doing all kinds of signs and wonders. So he said don't be deceived. Don't let you be deceived. He said some of the elect will be deceived. He said, the word of God must be published in all nations. And that basically all tongues, everybody needs to understand God. 
He's going to make sure of that. That's how merciful and good God is. He's not going to leave no stone unturned. He's going to make sure everybody knows. And I guarantee you, you to research how many languages the Bible is already published in. You might be at 95 percent. I don't know for sure, but I bet you we close to it. I bet you we close. Do you understand, people? Nation against nation, father against child, brother against brother, sister against sister, mother-in-law. He said, "Yo, one of one's enemy was those of his own household. Why would they be your enemies? Because they won't be followers of Christ. Because followers of Christ are designed, supposed to be on one accord, no division." You understand? Only reason they're going to be against you because they're going to be against Christ. And you're going to be against them because they be against Christ. It's simple. Yeah, pray for your enemies. But he said, don't be equally yoked with non-believers. So you got to come out from among them or you're going to be punished with them just like in Sodom and Gomorrah. Christ tell you all the things to look out for. Behold, the Christ is here. Behold, the Christ is there. There's people that's preaching the word of God right now that call themselves Jesus. If it wasn't true, I wouldn't say it. I'd have seen the videos. And people are like, he's, the, he's Jesus come back in the flesh. Oh, really? How old are ye of little knowledge? You know what I'm saying? You might want to understand that Christ is not going to come back the same way he came. He's coming back different. He's coming back from above. So anybody, they say Christ in the desert. He's not there. The whole world's going to see Christ coming. One thing I love about uh, Armageddon movies, when that big asteroid comes, everybody sees it. It's so big that everybody sees it. So you can't miss it. So when Jesus comes, it's going to be like that big asteroid coming. Everybody's going to be seeing it. He's going to be coming with his angels. So it might be an asteroid with a few little specks on the side that's shining just as bright as, not as bright as the Son of God, but shining with him. <laughs> wow, people. So be ready. And he said, watch. 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 Watch and be ready. Watch and be ready. You see, I was reading with my wife this morning about Matthew. He was like, how do we know? He was like, the father. We don't know the father. You know the father if you know me. You know the truth if you know me. You know the truth if you keep my commandments. You know the truth if you keep my word. You know the truth if you stand on every word that proceeds out the mouth of God. You know the truth. So don't let nobody deceive you. Christ has already come. Prophecy is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. But people do not want to take heed enough to give their life over to Christ. They're waiting. Don't be caught slipping. Every day place your cross on first. You're a watchman. And you are a servant of the Most High God. He said the things you do, I do, you would do also. Right? So you're trying to get to the point where you're so filled with the Holy Spirit that you're doing and walking and talking and acting and behaving in a manner well pleasing to the Lord. So you won't be caught slipping when that day comes. Because it's coming. Abortion is running rapid. He said, woe to those that give suck in those days. Wow, it's going to be a great tribulation on children. Wow. Does it make sense? You think about this, people. Let me, let me, ask, let me tell you something. If you go back to the Old Testament, during the birth of Moses, what happened? They persecuted children. When the birth of Christ was coming, they persecuted children, they killed little children. So when the coming of Christ coming, they're gonna do the exact same thing. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be now. So it's gonna be so horrible that Christ has to come back. You know, I tell people this story, I was writing a song one day and uh, it's the song, it's not even written yet. I haven't even put the words in, but me just imagining this song brings tears to my eyes. I envision Christ up there in heaven waiting and watching and waiting for his father to give commandment and he's headed this way. He's like, it's time. And it's just so beautiful and so wonderful. Him and his angels mount up 
and they start heading this way. So basically what he's saying is you won't know the exact time because he don't even know it. Only the father knows. And when the father let him know, that's the, that's the time. It ain't no new revelations. It ain't no new prophecy. Everything that's written in the Bible is written. That's why he went back to, he said, read what they talking about in Daniel. When you see the abomination standing in a place where it should not be. When you see the Antichrist. When you see the beast. Where it ought not to be. Seducing many people. And he says, I already began. There are many, Christ said this before in other scripture. There are many Antichrists in the world right now as we speak. And he was talking about that when he was talking to the disciples. There are many here already right now. Many of them. Seducing, deceiving, and being deceived. Many of them. One of the biggest deceptions right now is there are other ways to get to God besides Jesus. There are other ways to get to God. That new world religion, you know they're in the process of combining all religions. I'm going to tell you the truth to the matter. I was watching a TV show one day. And it was showing this new temple they're building. And it has all the different spiritual signs of Muslims, Christians, different religions. And they're trying to combine it to one. They're creating this right in front of our eyes. How do I know this is true? So I went to a customer house and I'm moving this customer. And I see that same image in their home. I see it. And I'm like, they got to know what this is. It's, it's happening right before your eyes. People, people that are joining these forces, the one world nation is coming upon us. You hear it all the time, a new world order. You hear it all the time. Well, the Bible talks about a new world order. It talks about the coming of the beast. It talks about getting the mark of the beast. It talks about the sign in your forehead or in your hand. Don't be caught slipping. Living for the world, worrying about the cares of this world. You know, one thing, like, let's take the holiday season, people. Let's take Christmas. Everybody's running around trying to get toys and gifts for people they love. And right now is the most distraction, most of, one of the most distracting times for a follower of Christ. People are distracted. I got to get this. I got to get that. I got to get that because Christmas is right around the corner. You understand? It's right there. I got to make sure I got this. Got to make sure I got that. But you know what else is right around the corner? Instead of trying to give your kids gifts, you might want to be enlightening them spiritually. Getting them ready for Christ. You know, I, I don't really believe in Christmas anymore. I, my thing, God has said in my heart, if you got it today to give, give it. Why wait? Tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Imagine how many people are prepping for Christmas right now and are gonna die from a car accident. Are gonna die from cancer. From are gonna die from a, a strange way. Not gonna reach it, made all this prep time to get ready for a holiday they're not gonna even see. Christ said it like this, with to the rich man that build a storehouse. It's like, I'm finna sit back and relax. I'm finna build a storehouse and I'm finna enjoy my days. And he said, that's, that's what happens when you set up for yourself riches in, the, in this world and not rich towards the things of God. A lot of people are focused on things in this world that are not enriching their soul. Not enriching the souls of your neighbor. Not enriching the souls of your co-workers. A lot of y'all are called to spread the gospel. But when you get around certain people, you're shut up. You're supposed to be a follower of Christ. That means you do what Christ did. I told people all the time, there's always an opportunity to spread the word of God. You just wait for it. It's coming. It's coming, people. We love trying to get people clothes right. I got to make sure my kids got this perfect outfit, the new Jordans that come out on the 23rd. Got to make sure they get them because I don't want them to be left out with the rest of the world who get Jordans. People, our priorities are all wrong, according to what Christ said. 
according to what the Bible speaks of. You know there have been many Armageddons? Don't get me wrong what I'm saying. There has not been a final Armageddon yet, but there have been many Armageddons. Think about when those people in Pompeii and that volcano erupted and killed everybody. They didn't know it. Out of nowhere, boom. And everybody whose souls weren't right with Christ perished. Those who are right with Christ lived. Tsunami. Everybody who was right with Christ will live, will rise with Christ. Everybody who died without Christ will not rise with him. Choose now whom you must serve. You may serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. When you serve something, you do it earnestly. You understand? Let me pause and I will continue.